Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Break the Huddle. I'm Nathan Johnston, and today I'm going to break down my three most questionable hires in the 2024 offseason. Starting off with number three, the new head coach for the Tulane Green Wave, John Summerall, coming over from Troy. We know what he did at Troy. He was able to put together some great seasons there, 12-2 and two in, tw- in 2022 and 11-2 and two in 2023. 23 and four overall in, in his head coaching career. That's pretty dang good. One and oh in, in bowl games. Biggest question mark for me one, he, he doesn't have much head coaching experience. Again, did a great job at Troy, only losing four games. I don't want to say that's easy to do, but when you start getting to a, a university like Tulane where you're going to be playing teams like Ole Miss, you're going to be playing teams like LSU you're going to be facing a lot more challenges in the American Athletic Conference. Um, you know, one thing that stood out to me that that I think is going to be a big challenge and, and a question mark for John Summerall is the fact that when most coaches go to a new university, a new program, it's a complete staff overhaul. If not some of the key players on that staff, the OCs, the DCs, you're going to bring in a variety of guys. But when you look at a coach like John Summerall and you and you look at the coaching staff he's bringing in, 90 to 95 percent of his staff at, at Tulane is coming over from Troy with him. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. Only time will tell. But when you look at some of the other guys that come in to, to some of these top programs, as I mentioned, it's a complete overhaul. So um, for him to be bringing 90 percent of his staff, it's going to be very intriguing to see if he can – if he can replicate what he was able to do. I also wanted to mention real quick too, that, you know, with John Summerall, he had a lot of success at Troy because he's from Huntsville, Alabama. He knows that state inside and out. He knows how to recruit there. And when you're at Tulane, you're going to have to be able to get those. You're going to have to be able to pry away a few guys from LSU, from Texas, from those bigger schools in that region that are going after the top talent in Louisiana. It's hard to put up a, a barrier a boundary, so to speak, to keep guys in state, to keep, you know, some of the top, I don't want to say the top lower level, but when you look at the three and maybe a couple four-star guys that are going to be playing at Tulane, again, it's a little bit different with the transfer portal. Only time will tell, but that's my reasoning. I think he has the potential to be a great head coach there at Tulane. I wish him the very best, but it's going to be tough coming over from, from a state and a school that, that was so close to home that he knew so well and probably has a lot of great relationships. Now I will say he coached at Tulane from 2012, 2013 as the code DC slash defensive line coach. So he, he, he might know a little bit more than, than I know. And again, in 2014 came back and co-defensive coordinator and linebackers coach. So he has experience there. He knows the lay of the land to an extent. So we're going to find out, but yeah, just, just some question marks there. My second coach with question marks, is going to be none other than Jeff Levy coming over from Oklahoma. We know that he has valuable experience with some great coaches. In fact, one of his first jobs was under Josh Heupel at Oklahoma. He went on to coach at Baylor, got some great experience at Baylor, went on to to, to coach at UCF with Josh Heupel there. Then he goes and coaches under Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. And then obviously a, a year under Brent Venables at Oklahoma, as, as the top OC there. Biggest question mark for me with Jeff Labby is he doesn't have any head coaching experience. And that's that's the main reason why it's a questionable hire for me, especially at a school like Mississippi State. Mississippi State has always thrived on hires that really never fit into the SEC. They were kind of the unicorns of the SEC, so to speak. When you look at when you look at guys like Mike Leach, RIP, when Mississippi State is a program that may not necessarily be able to get to the promised land in the SEC championship, but they are capable of winning eight to ten games consistent, consistently if they get the right guy in there. Is Jeff Levy the right guy? I don't know. I think he has the ability to recruit. I think he has the ability to run a high-powered offense. But at the end of the day, as we saw in the last three national championships, you're going to have to have a solid defense. The reason Kirby Smart won back-to-back is because of great defenses. The one, the reason why Michigan 
was able to overcome Washington's high-powered offense and limit them to the worst offensive game that Michael Penix has had all year, great defense, especially when you're going into the SEC. You're going to have to have a great defense, and um, we're going to see how things play out. But, again, I wish him the very best. I think I think he has the opportunity to do well. I think he's ready. I think this might be too big of a hire for his first head coaching job. Maybe he would have done better at a school like Arizona in the Big 12. That's still a very well-known program, Power 5, but maybe a little less pressure than the SEC. We're going to find out. And then my first uh, questionable, my number one questionable hire is going to be none other than Kurt Signetti, head coach at James Madison, now heads over to the University of Indiana. I'll, I'll put it point blank. What a great coaching career Kurt Signetti has had. He's from the Northeast. He's been all over. He's been at James Madison. Everyone knows what he did there. Overall head coaching career, 119 and 35. I mean, that's really impressive. And I think he has the opportunity to, 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 do, to do well there. I mean, look, he's coached guys at Alabama, like Julio Jones, Mark Ingram, Dante Hightower. He's coached other guys like Russell Wilson and Phillip Rivers. This guy knows how to coach. There's no doubt about that. The reason for, for the questionable hire here for me is, is simply because it's, it's Indiana. Look, I know that they probably have a good financial backing. I know guys like Mark Cuban, who are alumni, from that university. I know they're probably throwing in the cash right now, but at the end of the day, coaching at Indiana and going against the big 10 competition is a heck of a lot different than coaching at James Madison and the Sun Belt. Congrats to Kurt. You know, this is his first big coaching opportunity when it comes to head coaching. He's earned it. I will say he's earned it. But again, we're going to see how things play out. He knows how to coach. He's coached some great, some great players in the past. At the end of the day, it really comes down to, is Indiana the right spot? And can they get guys from the portal? Because that's what it's really going to come down to. Can he work the transfer portal? Can he get a key quarterback in there? Can he get a couple of other key pieces on that defense and offense to give Indiana a chance at the end of the day to compete in the Big Ten?